Hey everybody, welcome to the Epic Flight Academy and welcome back to the Private Pilot Ground School course. My name is Mike Thompson. Now, you know to be successful in this course, we need to be focused on three things. Number one, please study this content material in Epic's online course. And number two, these videos are just to assist you in parallel to that content. And thirdly, you're going to want to review all of this content one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking... The what now? Uh, we're talking about... The what now? The human ear. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about our ears and vestibular disorientation. Woo! There's a couple of big words. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at this graphic from our online course. And what I want you to notice in this graphic is there are three semicircular canals inside of our ear. Now, those canals are oriented in three dimensions that you're already familiar with from flying the airplane. Now the aircraft has its lateral axis from wingtip to wingtip and this motion we call pitch. Well inside of my ear I have one semicircular canal in this plane. The aircraft also has an axis from nose to tail and as I roll around that longitudinal axis that's called rolling and I also have a semicircular canal in my ear oriented this way around that roll axis. And then thirdly, in the aircraft, I've got a vertical axis and I yaw around that vertical axis by using the rudder. And I also have a third semicircular canal in my ear oriented this way to help me um, uh, to help me sense yaw. So you can see in our diagram there is a semicircular canal for each one of those three axes of rotation uh, or movement and your body when you move tells your brain hey I'm moving and it tells it which way. So if I were to go like this my brain would say hey we're rolling or if I go like this, my brain says, hey, we're pitching. It knows that from these semicircular canals. Well, how exactly does that happen? Take a closer look at the cutaway and you can see that inside each of these canals is a fluid. And this fluid is moving past a little uh, a cell called a cupula. Now this cupula cell has little tiny hairs that protrude out of the cell and into that uh, semicircular canal and they can sense the movement of that fluid. So if we were to lean one way the fluid in that canal in my middle ear has started to move it's moved past those little hair uh, 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 follicles uh, on that cupula cell. And that information has gone to my brain and said, hey, we're rolling. Now, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, that is pretty cool. But what we want to make you aware of as a pilot is that system of sensing movement can be fooled. It can also possibly cause me a little bit of disorientation and sometimes I might even feel a little queasy or airsick. Now the reason for that is because in addition to my middle ear my brain is also receiving information from my tendons and muscle spindles inside of my large muscles that helps my body sense its position. And thirdly, our brain, of course, is receiving information from our eyeball. So if we get into positions or situations, um, 
in a car or on a ship on a, a rough sea or in an airplane in turbulence and my eyes are seeing one thing my muscle spindles are sending information to my brain telling it something else and the semicircular canals in my ear are sensing something else entirely and all three of these sim signals are coming into the brain and the brain is thinking okay I'm not really sure what's going on and that's when we start to feel a little queasy and that ultimately could lead to air sickness now don't have any undue concerns about that air sickness is very common and it's actually quite normal to experience mild symptoms of air sickness and here's what happens in the vast majority of pilots you start to fly on a daily basis and guess what you get used to it you don't even notice it you don't even notice it you get very accustomed to it and and you continue to uh, love and enjoy flying now, besides some of that disorientation and air sickness, it is possible to start to fool this system and that could set a pilot up for a potentially dangerous situation. Now, we're gonna look at this diagram from our online course and we're gonna study how that happens. Now, remember that semicircular canal you can see that here on the left hand side of our diagram and it says we're not turning the brain is not receiving any uh, sensations and you can see that cupula straight up and down and those little hair cells straight up and down and the fluid inside that canal and it's called endolymph and you can see it here in the in the diagram the endolymph is not moving now, take a look at the very next picture in our diagram as you move to the right. As you start the turn, the endolymph in that canal starts to move, and as the fluid moves, it bends the hair on that cupula, and the cupula sends that signal to your brain, it says, hey, we're turning, okay, all is well. So here we are in this stabilized turn and the endolymph in that semicircular canal has stopped moving. Do you see the problem we're setting up? Once we stop that turn, we roll out wings level. Now that endolymph starts to move again and it tells the middle ear, hey, we're turning. Um, no we're not we're actually level but the endolymph is moving trying to convince the brain that we're turning and this can result in some orientation now disorientation if that disorientation is incapacitating that can potentially lead to a loss of control that could be a dangerous situation and that's why we study the human ear and the middle ear and these three semicircular canals and the cupula and the endolymph and you're going to review all of this with your flight instructor these head movements that we make in the airplane can lead to a variety of illusions and problems and you can see them here in your online course and you're going to go through them individually with your instructor one we call the Coriolis illusion the graveyard spiral the leans the somatographic uh, uh, illusion the inversion illusion the elevator illusion all of these different illusions I want you to review with your instructor but understand they're all a result of fooling the middle ear because of the motion of the endolymph past the cupula that we talked about and then a contradictory uh, signal to the brain and that's the reason that's what that is the um, the reason for all of these various illusions that you're going to review with your instructor 
So folks, that's what we wanted to review about the middle ear and the vestibular disorientation. We'll see you next time.